everyone for coming over to our our VXP project management and pitch workshop. We're so happy to have you. Uh, so let's just jump right into it as this is a 10 a.m. morning on a Sunday. Oh, so I need to really jump quick to this. So first of all, let me introduce everyone to myself. So I am a final year SFU BD major. I'm a current DoorDash intern, um, and I'm really focused on this merchant experience. So this is applying a lot of this design thinking to emphasize with your customer and find out what kind of problems uh, at DoorDash's merchants have, and then trying to solve it from there. As my competition experience, I have 10 plus hackathon and case competition experience. So I competed in a lot, so I have a lot of great tips to share with you in this workshop. Outside of work, I am a gamer. I've been playing Apex a lot. I'm a computer nerd, part of the uh, Vancouver meetup uh, in 2020, if you're part of that. And I'm a consumer of drama. Not the relationship drama, but the TV show drama. Currently catching up on Suits right now. Um, next, I'll pass it off to Eric to kind of introduce himself a little bit. Hi, I'm Eric, uh, president of VXP. And yeah, I'm a recent SIA SFU graduate, Simon Fraser University. For those who don't know SFU, uh, I currently work as a UX product designer at a startup called Meaningful Work, where we connect companies with nonprofits and provide them uh, nonprofits with skilled volunteering and, and implement uh, volunteer programs at companies. So that's that. I'm also an entrepreneur. I've been part of like, but directly part of uh, Influence 2 to 3 startups. Currently, and I'm also work as a freelance designer, product designer. But yeah, uh, outside of that, I'm a geek. I love love board games. I'm also weeb. I watch uh, I read a lot of manga. I used to watch a lot of anime. I uh, love food. Love food from everywhere, all over the world. Like always, I feel like the best way to understand a uh, a world's culture is through food, and uh. Also, I love the sea. I love going kayaking and just staying near the water. <laughs> yeah. All right, awesome. So let's go over the overview for today's workshop. So the first part that I'll be leading is how to manage your time in these uh, 24 hour competitions. I'll be going over what I coined the five step process of just the general idea of how you should go and use your time. I'll also talk a little bit about MVP planning. So what kind of items you want to include in your MVP during the competition. We'll also finish off with a small exercise, and then we'll move on to Eric's part, which is how to build a good presentation and pitch. So without further ado, let's talk about what I want you guys to take out of uh, my first part, which is how to manage your time. So a problem that I faced in these 24 hour competitions is that there's not enough time for certain areas, and especially the MVP is not fleshed out, AKA I aimed for the sky, but I only landed on the ground. So I wasn't able to complete everything I wanted to. So through my uh, five step process and MVP planning, I hope to give you guys a general idea of how you should manage your time, as well as to create an MVP that is doable within your time frame and with your team's experience. Now, stepping a little bit more into the five step process, I want you guys to introduce yourself, do some problem identification, solution building, splitting off and review. These are the core five steps, but I will expand a little bit more on them right now. So introducing, it is getting to know your team. The first step before anything else starts is to collect your team's contact information. Now, this is super important for a 24 hour competition. Why? Because your teammates might fall asleep at 4 a.m. and not wake up in time for your presentation. So you 100% need to have their phone number and possibly their landline in case they have their phone on mute. After you collect their information, you might also collect other stuff such as their LinkedIn, perhaps their portfolio, the past job experiences, or maybe past competitions to get a general sense of what kind of skills they have and what kind of um, experience they're looking to get out of the competition. When you're going into introdu uh, introduction and getting to know your team, you can kind of treat it like meeting a new friend. You want to get to know each other. Now, one game that I really liked using was Two Truths, One Lie, and this is just a general icebreaker game. This is a great way for me to not only know them um, on a competitor level, but also a little bit personal. Sometimes I find out that my teammates actually switched majors a few times, or maybe traveled to multiple continents, or actually worked in different industries that I never expected. 
And those are actually really cool to know uh, because you're not only just meeting a teammate for this 24 hour competition, you're also here to build your network and meet new people, cool people, mind you. So goal of introduction is to get you to know your teammates and to get an idea of what they prefer. Now, I want to uh, go through a little bit of what this might look like as part of the getting to know your team. So this is an example of a Google Sheets that I opened when I first met my teammates. Um, it's very simple. You just make it open to edit for everyone. They can put in their name, their phone number, which is very important, as I mentioned earlier, and all the other uh, pieces of items. You can actually ask them to open up a Google Drive, and that's why I suggest everyone to do. When you uh, meet your teammates, open a Google Drive and start putting items into it. This contact sheet is the first step, uh, the first piece that should be inside of your Google Drive. Moving on to the second part is problem identification. This is what I might call the most important step of the five step process. When you're going to competitions like these, sometimes you might bring in your own kind of like novel solutions that you want to try out. But that's not always the right way to go about it, especially since we don't release a prompt until the day of. So the key here is to not work backwards and always start from the problem. This is actually part of the design thinking workshop that we held yesterday, emphasizing with your consumer. And that is important because you want to build something that has a defined user and you're able to do research from. In your problem identification, I really want you to focus to let uh, on letting everyone speak and focus on combining ideas. Ideas might come from very different um, approaches. However, you're always able to combine them to create an even better idea. As well, during this uh, step, you want to do some light research. So you want to have enough research that you're confident that your problem is actually a real problem. You don't want to spend too much time on this step though. I suggest you to spend about an hour because in the past, I've run into problems where I myself spend two or three hours researching for a problem that we didn't end up using because our team decided to go elsewhere. So focus here is to split off, have everyone do a little bit of uh, problem identification, come together and combine. But at the end of the day, you want to come together and find one single problem that your team will base your whole solution off of. The goal of this step is again, come to this single problem your team will solve. Now, I mentioned earlier, this is part of the uh, design thinking process, and that's really the emphasize part. So before you get to defining, idealizing, uh, prototyping or testing, you really need to emphasize. And as I'm talking to you guys right now, I want you guys to emphasize this part. Problem identification, make sure there is a user for your product. Okay, time to go into the solution building. This is your time to be creative, but, being creative also means avoiding groupthink. So groupthink is this idea where when you have a group of people talking in the same room, they're all going to gravitate to one idea. They might shut down their own ideas because it feels like everyone else is agreeing with this one single idea. So here I want you to encourage your teams to split off and brainstorm. And what this might look like is after you decided on your final product, uh, problem that you want to solve, you guys might spend 30 minutes brainstorming on your own time of different ideas. Now, there might be some overlap, but that's totally okay. The key here is to have different kind of ideas that you might be able to mesh into one super awesome solution. I want you guys to be ambitious. This is not a hackathon, so you actually don't need to code anything. Instead, you're able to draw it out, design it up. So you can dream big, but you still need to make sure it's technically feasible and reasonable. So you shouldn't uh, recommend an AI chatbot that can be your best friend because unfortunately we don't have the technology to create uh, the next Skynet. But what you can do is create some uh, examples of perhaps Microsoft's uh, new machine learning chatbots. Those are attainable and it's technically feasible. Although you're not Microsoft, you can pretend you are a uh, bigger than your four man team or four person team, mind you. The goal here is to create a solution that is new, exciting, and ambitious. So I'm going to give you an example of some, some of my time in solution building. For a competition that I went into, which was a machine learning uh, hackathon in Toronto called Hackexplore, I ran into a unique situation where I didn't know what kind of solution I wanted to solve. What I did was I leaned onto my teammates, the teammates that I met literally two hours ago, 
and what I learned from Two Truths, One Lie. One of my teammates was actually a door dasher. And as a door dasher, he needs to go downtown with his car and drive into a lot of areas. Sometimes he needs to park in metered locations. Now, this is risky for him because he doesn't know if he's going to be charged $10 for parking without paying. So he would have loved a tool that could tell him exactly how risky it was for him to park in a certain location. And that's exactly what we based off our solution off of. We created Risky Ticket. It's a tool that allows him to make an informed gamble for parking tickets. It pulled in information from uh, the city itself, the city of Toronto, that's made public available. And it was an amazing solution because it was outside of the box. It was ambitious, but it was still possible. We really felt the impact when we were watching the other competitors because everyone else went with a very, a very I guess, basic idea of a chat box because that's the first thing you think of when you want to apply machine learning. So I really want to emphasize, you want to be creative. You want to find a unique uh, problem and you want to create a unique solution. So after you created, after you introduced yourself, you identified your problem and you're building your solution, you want to split off. It is an iterative, iterative process and it's what you're going to spend a lot of your time on. Now, the key here is to avoid working together. I know it's important to be democratic and to have everyone on the same page, but that's exactly why you spent three hours earlier coming to a problem that you guys all want to solve and a solution that you all want to solve. Now is the time for you to split off and have everyone take ownership of certain areas. So here are some potential roles that your team might take. Slide making. This is important. This is a design competition. So you need someone to take care of the slides. Someone who will make all the master slides, who will format everyone's information to make it look pretty. If your idea is good, that's great. But if you can't convey that to the judges, it won't make the impact. Slide making, never skip out on this part. Next is analysis and research. You want to spend time uh, backing up your research. It shows to the judges when you do research that is properly cited and you have good user personas built. And finally, solution building. Now, this is where you'll put your, the majority of your teammates, maybe two or three um, of your teammates, as you want to build a solution that has good UI and good UX, looks pretty, aesthetic, and is an amazing solution. So the goal here is to have your teammates take ownership of the parts. Yes, it's important to check in every now and then, but let them make the final decision, as being democratic really hampers the time management of your team. Remember, you only have 24 hours. You don't have time every so often for a 30 minute debate. Now, here is an example of when I tried to do splitting off. This was for a protothon, you, uh, which is very similar to a proto, uh, sorry, it, this is, was for a produthon, which is more of a business kind of a competition versus this, which is a protothon, which is more design based. In this competition, um, we spent the bulk of our time working on our problem and our solution. And you might be able to guess how much time we spent on our, our presentation. Well, I'll let you know. We spent one hour working on our slides and it does not look good. You can take a look at my examples right now, but it just doesn't mesh well. It doesn't look polished. And that's the problem that I don't want your team to face. I want you guys to have someone who will take care of the slides from start to finish and not leave it for the very end. In this competition, actually, what's very special about it is that if you were able to uh, win one of the awards or podium prizes, you have one additional week to flesh out your idea. And that's what our team did. So this is our second iteration of our solution. In here, the main difference is that instead of having all of us work on the slides at the same time, one of our teammates actually elected to take care of everything in the slides. They took care of designing how it might look like, the feel of it, as well as the aesthetic. It was consistent throughout. You can tell right away that there's a huge difference. And that's a difference I want your team to make by splitting off. Having people take care of the problem, having someone take care of the slides is the first step of making your whole presentation cohesive and to really maximize this 24 hours. So to reiterate, you want to split off and have everyone take different ownerships. Now, in the final step is the review process. This is optionally required. And what do I mean by this? This is optional if you don't want to win, but it's required if you do want to win. It's a final rundown where you can reveal gaps in your solutions. I recommend you guys to spend or allocate at least an hour for you guys to do a full rundown of your presentation. Now, Eric will go through 
um, how a good presentation and pitch might look like. So listen very closely in the next few minutes. But in this final step, I want you to add and focus on adding that extra little polish to differentiate your team amongst the other competitors. Now, what do I mean by uh, differentiating yourself and being memorable? Think of it this way. You're a judge and you're watching 10 different presentations. You as a competitor want to stand out as one of the top presentations. How are you able to do that? Here's a few ways. One, you can be, you can have an interesting introduction. Maybe you'll start it off with a quote. Maybe you'll start it off with introducing your persona right away. Maybe you'll start off with a personal story from one of your teammates um, that actually goes along with the problem. You do not want to be that team who says, hi, my name is, because trust me, every other team starts with that. And you will not make a good introduction if you start very basic. So think of ways to be interesting and to stand out. Second is to use those personas and use uh, personal stories. So like my hackathon story, my teammate had the same problem uh, with being a door dasher. So we brought that in very early on and we always referenced it back to him, how this was a problem he had, this was the solution he wanted, and this was why we created it. Having that story that's always being brought back creates a very interesting storyline. You can also add small quips, small jokes here and there. Remember, your judges are very young, so they might get a lot of references uh, along the way. You can throw in a meme or two if you think it's appropriate, but the main idea here is to be personable to your judges. And finally, I want you guys to make sure you're having clear impacts and high levels of why. Last thing you want to do is to give a judge a blob of text and expect them to read everything or to read word for word off of a script. Instead, you really want to focus in on those high level impacts on each side. So what's a key takeaway of your problem? What's a key takeaway for your solution? Be concise and your judges will appreciate that. So that about wraps up the five step process. There's a lot of items um, that I ran over. And of course, you can take a look at the slides that will be published later or the recording. Um, the next thing I do want to run over is MVP planning. So this is important because I don't want you guys to spend too much time on trying to flesh out a huge idea, but only able to complete 50% of it. So one way you can go about MVP planning is a value versus complexity framework. It's my go-to. There are two axes here. You have value, which is the benefit of customer um, so in terms of design, as well as benefit to the business. Um, so how you're looking to create this um, product and how you're looking to monetize, etc. That's optional, by the way, as this is, after all, a design-based competition. And that'll be on the vertical axis. Uh, sorry, uh, horizontal axis. Next is complexity, which is time and research it might take. So this is basically how long it will take for you guys to design it. You'll be able to get a little bit of a feel of how long it, it will, so I have no problems there for your team. So this is how it might look like. Um, so small correction. Value is vertical and uh, effort is horizontal, but you want to place your planned features onto this map. You might be able to do this on Miro or FigJam, um, whatever tool you propose to use, you just want to be able to map it out. So quick wins are items that you know you're going to be able to create really fast and create a lot of value design-wise. That goes on the upper left. Major projects, so these are the crown jewels for your um, project. These are the one and one or two items that you know is going to take the, a lot of time, but will make the most impact. That's on the top right. Finally, fill-ins or maybes are items, as it's noted, is just a fill-in. It's if you have extra time. And time sync on the bottom left is just items you know won't won't be worth it. And that's on the bottom right. Sorry. Here are some ways for you to actually put everything together. So as I mentioned earlier, you want to split off, but you still have time to group together every so often to make sure you're all on the same page. Now you can use a fig jam or Trello at, for a Kanban board of items that your team is doing, done, and, and uh, in progress. Um, the key here is to be able to communicate visually really quickly with your teammates. Remember, you won't be always in the same voice chat. Instead, you'll be meeting every now and then. And that's kind of the process that I want you guys to really take in. Notion is also a great idea, as uh, Eric has mentioned. So with everything that I shared, um, I want to pass it off to Eric to kind of uh, go through a prompt. Um, so we're going to do an exercise for MVP. So let's pass it off to Eric. 
All right. <clears throat> Let's do a short, small exercise uh, where I'm gonna I'm posting the link to the Fig Jam. So click on that. Uh, here, basically, what we're gonna do is everybody just um, brainstorm a couple ideas in five minutes. I'll give you guys five minutes. Uh, the prompts there on the board designed for a mindfulness app to help families. It's up to you how you want to perceive it, what you think it could be. So take a sticky note and then just write your ideas in it. And I'll, I'll give you guys five minutes and then we'll start trying to scope what is big, what is small. So give you guys a better idea about it. Your time starts now. I have the timer on Fig Jam, awesome. Yeah, Fig Jam's so cool. <laughs> A very new feature that came Figma came out. So, uh, don't don't read the MVP planning the screenshot. I that's for later. Just focus on the prompt for now. Like think about what uh, think about the problem, right? As Brandon mentioned, focus on the problem, and then really try to see what what feature of it, like an application or something that you'll be able to design to tackle the problem. I like how you guys are bouncing ideas off of each other. That's very cool. And really go as ambitious as you guys want. Um, any kind of features that is technically feasible, drop it down here. We're going to map it out. So uh, sky's the limit. Yes, especially when um, Brandon did mention, like, we want to focus on features that's viable for the Proton. But initially, when you're brainstorming, go all out like come up with the most wildest most amazing or maybe like like most ambitious ideas like feel free to do that and put it on a collaboration board like fig jam here and then you can bounce it off see what's viable maybe that ambitious could be your wow factor that you could somehow try to make it viable with other features that you come in other features or ideas that you can get from your other uh teammates, and you might just have an award-winning uh, design idea. And you guys have less than five minutes.
one minute, right? Did I say five minutes? <laughs> Less than one minute, sorry. 30 seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, pencils down, but for you guys, mouse is down. <laughs> well, mouse. All right, so let's see what we have here. <clears throat> so Brandon, if you can help me with this, there are a lot of ideas you guys came up with. I don't know, I uh, could go through all of them. We'll try, we'll just talk about it. I think we're just gonna be taking an idea, talk about it, and then place it on the graph chat, seeing how it goes. But usually there's a step in between that you guys might wanna do is um, somewhere, you can do it before or after putting it in the graph is like, uh, try to see what's common, combine the graph, uh, combine ideas together and then put it on graphs or maybe after, after putting it on the graphs. So yeah, Brandon, any, I see you've been looking around, any idea that you know that you wanna talk about initially? Yeah, uh, let's take a look around. So Mindfulness app. So for a Mindfulness app, we really want to first uh, build it off our crown jewel. So the key feature that we want to build off of. So let's take a look around and see what kind of uh, crown jewels we can slap onto our uh, plan. You can just pick any actually, Eric. What do you think? Yeah, just pick one. I, I just, I picked one right now. Okay. To see where I am. So gamification of certain group activities done as a family. So this would make the activity more engaging as a family. I, I really like this gamification, like make it more like a game, like family thing come together, just have fun. Uh, in terms of value, I do see it pretty high. In terms of complexity though, it is because gamification is not described here very uh, in very specific. So what kind of gamification, what kind of group activities, a certain group activity is still very broad. So I would put this higher in complexity until and unless the group activity has been more generalized, more specified, then maybe we can get a better idea of the complexity. Yeah, so uh, what might happen is, for example, if we put gamification over here, some features for gamification is obviously badges, uh, maybe a leaderboard, and those are those extra features that shouldn't take too long to create, but create a lot of value. So those might come over the quick wins. So you can see how after you uh, collect and choose your crown jewel, you can create those additional kind of uh, points that can go anywhere on the map, but is all related to this one crown jewel. So that's kind of an idea I want you guys to go into it with. Uh, really brainstorm on these big features. Choose one and build around it. So let's uh, go back here and see if there's any other cool stuff that we can drop in. I've found another one. <clears throat> it's a very simple one. And I love you app for families sends a text. Like could be like, maybe I can imagine it as a button. Like you have a list of family members already contacts put in, click it, sends an I love you. That's in terms of complexity, totally doable. Very, very simple. Now in terms of value, I think it's higher and I think it's decently all right in the middle or a little bit higher in terms of value. I don't know about you, Brandon, but everybody will have their opinion on this, but definitely. Yeah, I think uh, there, there's a lot of the perspective of value. It, it all comes back to identifying a customer. So if you identified a really good uh, persona, a really good end user that has a use for something like this, this creates a lot of value immediately. It's all about bringing in that storyline. So for me, if I were to create an I love you app, maybe it could be part of the gamification and it could just be um, a little bit uh, on the quick wins. As like you mentioned earlier, it's very easy to make. However, it can have a lot of value. So I would definitely put that there. Maybe it's part of the gamification even. Definitely track that when you want. I found another one, <clears throat> a very cool idea mm -hmm. here. 
an app that records how family members felt during days, such as happy, tired, etc. App gives games and activities to alleviate negative emotion. So I really want to focus on the first part of this <clears throat> because I think I personally did this uh, with one of my relationships and like just having like Google Calendar, we could see each other's Google Calendar, what they are up to. Like sometimes they add a little bit emotion into it, so it makes it like you understand you connect with that person more. So in terms of like value, I feel like that's a very high and value. So this way you understand your family members quite often. I'm an international mm -hmm. student. So I also live very far from my family. <clears throat> and so they also would like me to like, hey, can I get an update? What's up? You have been quiet recently. So a little like if this kind of application would definitely help bridge the gap between me and my family that's halfway across the world. So awesome. <clears throat> Complexity wise, it's not super high. It could be like mid, but value wise, I can definitely see it being there. <clears throat> yeah, we're just trying to find where I put my slide so we can move on afterwards, but that might be a moment. Okay, um, so seeing here and keeping in mind of time, I think uh, we'll just make some end comments and then we'll move on. How's that sound, Eric? Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> All right, so uh, looking through here, these are a lot of recommendations, I would say. Um, and what I mean by that is that they're kind of like a full, uh, fully fleshed out idea that is missing add-ons. Now, by add-ons, maybe I'll be a little bit more specific. It's stuff like calendar sync to help families know their schedule. Like this could be uh, a small feature, part of a bigger one, for example, uh, this one made by Andrew. And um, these are the kind of features that I'm looking for if I want to really flesh out my idea. Some other items that could go in here is maybe a uh, home bar. A home bar is actually a feature that can slap onto here and it might have a lot of value if it makes sense because you might have a lot of tabs. Maybe there's a help screen. And again, that's another uh, feature that you can slap on somewhere here. Maybe it's a maybe because um, your UI and UX is so intuitive that you don't need a help screen. That could be in your argument. So the idea here is to pick your one crown jewel uh, idea, flesh it out, have a lot of these other features that you might want to add on to increase its value, have some optional ones that if your team has more time, you can run into. Um, but the general idea is to be able to map it out and to be able to brainstorm. That's a, another huge important component. Okay, with that, uh, I'm gonna move back to the presentation. So I'm just gonna switch back to my view. Now, uh, this next part will be mine, which is we're going to be talking about um, pit slides and what you what people ex what uh, we're expecting from you uh, to have in your pit slides. I uh, hey, Eric, would it be better if you uh, share screen this? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll share screen for this one. Yeah, because you might be uh, jumping between uh, slides, right? Yes, I'll just okay. Okay. share screen. Yeah, um, yeah. so pit slides, let me also open the chat because I'll be transferring some stuff over there. Okay, yeah, so for pit slides, it's very standard general. So if you, if you have experience as an entrepreneur or just experience presenting business or case competitions, you could definitely, uh, it's, you see the similarities on all, all of them. So there's this one very standard uh, pitch deck that like if you if you're into entrepreneurship and like learn how to do um, like com not just competition, but maybe like slides for your startups, you guys probably heard of Guy Kawasaki. It's um, it's pretty the guy like like he's probably the most you've heard and his slides are just amazing and very to the point and how like teaches how to do presentations and all that really really enjoy that it's just and i based my slides on top of his currently so i so so check him out he but his his framework is a little bit different from uh what i have right now give me one second actually let me stop sharing screen so i can have just this <clears throat>
Okay, I don't want to. Okay, there you go. This must need her. There are no more tabs up up top. So yeah, I based my slides here based on previous Proton competitions, uh, the judging criteria for the, the Arc Proton and how people how effective presentation is usually looks like. So these are the uh, things that um, points that you need to touch up on. Persona problem, the solution, interactive prototype, usability test plan, what's next, and team. So the thing, uh, the the submission that we require from you guys is actually going to be all of the presentation, the interactive prototype, and a video where you guys will be pitching and we'll be sending it to our judges to review. Now, let me expand on each one of them. First, you start up with a persona where you describe your ideal user. Try to see, get, try to go a little bit deep, deeper than you usually would. Don't um, not just like surface level, so that the audience might feel more connected. Put put themselves in the shoe of the user. After after the user has been defined, it will be easier to feel more personal with the problem. So when then you explain the problem and connect it back to the user. So this way you have a better understand, uh, the audience will have a better understanding of what exact what, what problem are you exactly solving? So describe the pain you're alleviating. Yeah, the goal is to change the pulse rate of the audience basically to really, really connect with that user and the problem. After that, then, you, then it's the solution part. You can go into your solution a little bit and then show your interactive prototype because it's gonna be a limited uh, video recording. So maybe you wouldn't be able to touch up upon each and every fancy features of your prototype, but what you have to do is basically show your prototype and try to uh, connect it back to the problem. So show how it is exactly solving the problem. So, so show that user flow uh, on, on your demonstration in the video. All the other features, if you have time, I, I would go for it. Otherwise, like leave them off because they are uh, they are just like, aesthetic reasons and just support overall completeness, which is another criteria in, that people will be judging for. Um, moving on, so usability test plan. So this is something that's uh, uncommon. Well, then again, Proton is a new new competition, a uh, new type of competition that has not as much um, many before it come. So this is something new that we are uh, adding in that's uh, different from other comp protons or other designathons is a usability test plan. Because if you've been part of the yesterday's workshop about design thinking, in the five-step process of design, testing is core. It's very, uh, it has been mentioned, it's very, very important after all the design and the work has been done. Because now you have an amazing, beautiful design you have those uh, that's super fancy and everything, but then how do you know if it actually works? How do you know if it actually solves a problem? So with that, you need to come up with a usability test plan according to, uh, if you guys uh, missed out on yesterday's, sorry, yesterday we had a usable uh, test, test workshop, usability testing pro workshop. So you could probably take a lot of key points from there to explain your usability test plan here. You could probably have a more complex one done, but we all were looking as a more surface level usability test plan that you can go and explain just to see how viable the product is. And then uh, what's next? So now that you have created an amazing design and with an amazing idea that solves, solves users and the problem, how would you hypothetically take it further to the next level? So this is a very, uh, this is just an ambitious thing, like hypothetically, if you get support of any kind, how you can take it. So I want you to guys also be, think ahead. How could you take this to another level? Or maybe it, not just as like, it maybe an actual, um, actual application, but what other features you could even include that will take it to an, another, the, your ambitious features that you brainstormed before that will take it to a new level. And finally, describe your team. Be fun, be quirky, like tell about yourself, name, title, and of course, a means of contact. So if you, at, we have judges and speakers, people from like various different uh, tech companies coming in. So if they might see uh, someone of interest in terms of uh, their skills, obviously they would love to reach out. You know? So that's the basic, 
that's the basic slide um, that I'm expecting from you guys. I'll be posting this these slides on Discord later. But yeah, I think that's all I had. Brandon, is there anything more you'd like to go through? Yeah, I just mentioned it in the chat as well, but notice how they always bring it back to Jade. So they introduced Jade really early on when they talked about the problem, they put it in perspective of Jade as well as a solution. That's really important in order to create a story because you really want your judges to feel like this is a problem they can emphasize with and a problem that they have. And your solution is the one that solves everything. Story is very important in these presentations and I really implore you guys to find that uh, one persona to follow through or to find a personal story through uh, one of your teammates possibly. Um, that's my key takeaway. Mm -hmm. Storytelling is definitely very important. It's it's not just important in this Proton itself, but even outside of this, when you're trying to show off your design, definitely do storytelling. People love hearing stories. All right, and I think that's about it, right, Brandon? Yeah, that's all I have from yeah, on my side. That's great. Yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, like feel free to shoot, now's the time. We have about nine minutes before our other workshop but yeah thanks guys for attending yeah so it's actually going to be the same zoom room for the next workshop so i'm going to stop the recording and maybe we can take like a 10 minute break and then i'll restart the recording for the next workshop